so many buyers moving to Lower Alabama reach out to us asking us which Eastern Shore city is better, Spanish Fort or Daphne? So to answer that question, we're making a video to share our personal opinions um, to hopefully help y'all get a better idea of what each is like. And maybe you'll decide you like the sounds of one over the other. I remember back in the day when we were doing our research on where to move, I Googled best places to live near Mobile. And at the time, Daphne was named number one, followed by Fairhope and Spanish Fort. Now, this video, we're only going to discuss Daphne and Spanish Fort because Fairhope is a totally different vibe than the other two. So, let's get started. Okay, so first things first, let's get the population out of the way. Both cities have experienced exponential growth within this past decade. Um, this year, Spanish Fort is home to over 10,000 residents and Daphne is over 28,000. So this is a big difference and has a significant effect on things such as traffic and schools. So let's talk traffic. Locals will be the first to say that traffic is bad in Daphne. At times this is true, especially on Highway 98 and especially during peak times. Daphne is also home to Lake Forest, which is one of the largest subdivisions in the whole state of Alabama. This community of homes is located right off of Highway 98, along with thousands of businesses. So a lot of cars pass through all day long. So in my mind, this contributes to a lot of that traffic. And since we're originally from Chicago, we are 100% unfazed by any traffic we encounter here. Um, the worst traffic jam here is not even comparable to a minor traffic jam in Chicago. So we always laugh when people complain about traffic. What? This is it. But I'll tell you one thing that we do complain about though, and that's the drivers around here. That's the furious one. And it's the drivers because they don't use their blinkers. Why do you don't? Yes, blinkers people, why don't you use your turn signals? <laughs> yeah, why okay? don't you use them? <laughs> why, 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 why? But. Yeah, I'm done, back to traffic. Okay, so now locals will say the same about Spanish Fort traffic. There are so many two lane highways and if there's a car pulled over um, or an accident, that's it, be prepared to crawl. Another issue is the town population has increased so much and so fast and road infrastructure just hasn't kept up. A perfect example in Spanish Fort is Spanish Fort Elementary or Rockwell Elementary School. There's so many more students and cars are lined up causing dead stop traffic on main roads. Um, there are plans of adjustments to be made soon to help keep traffic moving because pickup and drop off traffic is an absolute nightmare. So let's hope they get to work on that and fast. <laughs> yeah, we hear a lot of how traffic has just ruined the way of life here or how our city officials just continue to allow more and more subdivisions and apartments to be built, allowing more and more people to move in, which creates what? more traffic. So between the two towns, traffic is going to be prevalent in both areas. Yeah, don't be surprised if you find yourself in bumper to bumper traffic at any given moment in either town. And since we mentioned schools, that's next. It's no secret the Eastern Shore is home to a lot of highly rated schools in Baldwin County with Daphne and Spanish Fort on the very top of that list. Yeah, y'all are gonna find that both areas have great schools. Um, one really neat option you have is if your child wants to pursue the IB um, program, the International Baccalaureate program, it's housed at Daphne High School, but your child can still attend if you live in Spanish Fort if he or she is accepted, so that's just something good to know. With Spanish Fort having a much smaller population, expect a tight-knit school community. It won't be overwhelming for you or your kids, and everyone knows everyone, literally. It's also a great chance to become a big fish in a small pond with, you know, less competition and more opportunity to earn a well-known reputation. You may stand out in your own sport or a club and any way you never could in a very large city. Yeah, that's so true. And I think it's really wholesome and it's easy to fit into. Um, one thing that always stands out to me about Spanish Fort schools are how immaculate the campuses are. You can really tell that they have like a deep sense of pride in keeping everything nice for the staff and the students and the community. Um, their high school baseball stadium is phenomenal. Like we were so blown away the first time we saw that and we've never seen one that nice and it goes for all the schools. They're all beautiful. Both schools are very well known for their athletics and are huge rival especially in football down here it's friday night lights even if you don't have kids playing that you know of you'll know the stats of their teams and you'll cheer for your home team all yeah, the time that's so true the biggest difference between the two in my opinion is the size daphne has a larger student body and is going to be a lot more diverse which is a good thing because kids get to interact with a wider range of social groups both schools are stem certified and have been recognized for having award-winning special needs programs and gifted students all schools within the baldwin county education system will typically offer the same programs for students and follow the same curriculum so size and location are really the main differences in in my mind 
And another thing to mention that may be helpful to know is that Daphne High has a lot of subdivisions within walking distance. Spanish Fort is very spread out and walking to the high school really isn't going to be an option for very many kids. So Daphne and Spanish Fort each have their pros. Daphne is great because it's centrally located and it has a little um, downtown area that's super cute. It has a diner with a bakery, a bar, there's antique shops and so many other little places that you can check out. Um, it has some really fun parks with playgrounds and a pier over like in the bay. There's also plenty of great restaurants in Daphne to check out as well. And Spanish Fort is where the mall is. You have the movie theater and you have the bowling alley. You'll also get the causeway, which is where you'll find these amazing restaurants in Mobile Bay. So Spanish Fort doesn't have much of a charming downtown area like Daphne, but it has the causeway, which in my opinion makes up for it. And plus, like I said, that huge shopping area. Right, Spanish Fort is far more quiet though because there is just less commotion. Highway 98 in Daphne is a very long stretch of road packed with stores, restaurants, doctor's offices, car dealerships, you name it, it's here. Um, there's also a Walmart, a Target, and a Chick-fil-A all in a row. So you know the traffic is heavier just from having those three establishments. And neither town offers much of a nightlife, but both are very easy to get to downtown Mobile and Fairhope for some action if you're wanting to get out for an evening or you know do some dinner and drinks. I'm not saying we want to bar hop until 3 a.m. or anything, but, not anymore. <laughs> but a, a nice local place to go with you know your friends to go eat and hang out is kind of hard to find unless it's, you know, McSherry's or Bone and Barrel in downtown Fairhope. Yeah, that's so true. Um, so the towns are similar in that neither have a lot of crime. Um, and there is a nice police presence that keeps you feeling very safe. So uh, you're also not far from beaches. Mobile Bay is close by. Outdoor activities can be found in both cities. Um, for example, Daphne has a really popular pickleball court um, that has adult leagues. And we know a lot of people rave about this. Spanish Fort has the historic Blakely State Park for hiking and camping and fishing. And it's a real neat place full of history as well as great trails for biking. And Spanish Fort as a whole is just gorgeous. You have to see it, I guess, to, to see what I'm saying. But <laughs> there's so many picturesque winding roads surrounding the you know, beautiful lush forests. There's some rolling hills with great views of the foliage. It's just nice to have these scenic views with no commotion or stores in sight. And you can find that all over Spanish Fort. Yeah, with so much untouched land, it really makes the city stand out. Um, housing costs in general have gone up quite a bit since 2021, like the rest of the country. So housing can be limited and nice apartments get scooped up very, very quickly. Um, new construction generally has a waiting list and many newcomers have ended up paying higher than normal market values for existing homes and some even got caught up in those stressful bidding wars that I'm sure you've all heard about. Yeah, in Daphne, the average cost for a home is around 315,000. There will be a lot more options for properties here in several different price points, ranging all the way from the twos to, you know, high fives or even more than that if you're sure. on the bay. And we mentioned Lake Forest before, which is a massive subdivision with over 3,000 homes that has a lot of modestly priced homes too. There's also new master plan communities like Jubilee Farms where new builds can be you know, going for the high twos. And Bellaton is another standout neighborhood with gorgeous, luxurious homes selling for the 500,000 range. So you can really find exactly what you're looking for in Daphne. And in Spanish Fort, the average price home is gonna be around $350,000. You may find you have less options for homes here and they are a bit more pricey. Um, there are a lot of newer developments like the village at Rain Plantation. Um, there's also the Highlands or the very popular Stone Bridge. Um, and homes there are easily gonna go for the high fours and high fives. Yeah, and there are older established areas where you can find slightly more modest price homes, but they are far and few between and they get picked up pretty fast because this is a very desirable area. Stonebrook is a good neighborhood that offers newer homes from the mid to high twos and you know, let low threes range and it has nice amenities like a playground and a pond. So yes. definitely check it out. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that last one. That's a nice moderately priced newer build. Um, so overall, more homes and options will be found in Daphne, but you can still find great homes for sale in Spanish for it. It all just depends on what your search criteria is. So that wraps up this video on Spanish Fort versus Daphne. These are two well-loved cities in Lower Alabama, right next to Mobile. They have the best schools in the county and they have plenty of pros that most definitely outweigh the cons. Yeah, in our book, you cannot go wrong with either. So give us a call to help you find your next home here in Lower Alabama. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all in the next one. See you guys. Bye guys.